Hi, today, today we're looking at section 6-5, solving linear inequalities. So we're moving away from an equation into just an inequality. So take out something for notes. You can pause the video and write your notes at any time. And complete the check it out questions after each of the examples. Our learning target today is I can solve, or I can graph and solve linear inequalities in two variables. Remember inequality is greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, or less than or equal to. Linear equality is, a, is similar to linear equation, but the equal sign is replaced with one of our inequality symbols, so they're no longer equal. A solution of a linear inequality is any ordered pair that makes the inequality true. So there's going to be many ordered pairs that'll make them true. So here, our first example, tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the inequality. So we want to substitute in negative 2 for x, and substitute in 4 for y, and see if the, I'm sorry, for y, and see if the inequality holds true. So again, we took our value for x, put it in for x, and our value for y, and substitute that in there for our y. Simplifying, we get 4 is less than negative 4 plus 1 or 4 is less than negative 3, and that is false. Therefore, our ordered pair negative 2, 4 is not a solution to this inequality. Let's look at our second example. We're given the ordered pair 3, 1, so we put 3 in for x and 1 in for y and see what we end up with. The second example, 1 is greater than 3 minus 4. Simplifying this side, we get 1 is greater than negative 1, and that's yes, that is true. So therefore, the ordered pair 3, 1 is a solution. Now it's your turn. You have two inequalities. See if those ordered pairs are a solution. So again, a linear inequality, it describes a region on coordinate plane, and all points in the region are solutions. And we're going to look at shading. One term we're going to be talking about is a boundary line. When we've graphed so far, they've all lines have been solid. Now with an inequality, we're going to either have a solid or dashed boundary line and then have to shade on one side or the other of the boundary line. So in this one, when the inequality is written as y is less than or equal to, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, the points on the line are part of the solution and it's a solid line. The line becomes dashed when y is great, less than or y is greater than. We have a dash line here. As far as the shading goes, you notice here this is shaded above the line. When y is greater than or greater than or equal to, we shade above. And when it's less than or less than or equal to, we're going to be shading below the boundary line. And we'll run through a lot of examples for you to see this. So the steps in graphing linear, in, la, graphing linear inequalities. Solve the inequality for y. So put it in slope-intercept form which we've been doing for a long time, it seems like. Then graph the boundary line. So graph it as if it were an equation. Then use a solid line if it's greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than, or dash line if, it, if those points on the line can't be part of the solution. Shade the half plane above the line if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, or below if it's less than or less than or equal to. And then pick a point to check your answers. So in this example, we want to graph the solutions of the linear inequality y is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. So it is already put in slope-intercept form. So let's go ahead and graph this as if it were an equation. So with our graph, we have our slope is 2 over 1 and our y-intercept at the point 0, negative 3. So we start with our point 0, negative 3. Slope go up 2 over 1. Or, da or down 2 over 1. And then, since it has the equal to underneath it, we draw in a solid line. This is our boundary line. Now we have to determine which side of the boundary line we shade on, above it or below it. So let's pick a point and see what happens. Okay, so to see which way we shade, we need to pick a point that's not on our boundary line. So again, pick something that's easy to figure out doesn't go through the origin, we can pick the point 0, 0, since it's not on our line we drew in. Substitute 0, 0 in, like we did in our first example. Is 0 less than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 3? We end up with 0 is less than or equal to negative 3. And that's a no, which means this 
point is not part of our solution. So we're going to shade everything on this side of the boundary line. And that's our solution. All those, that whole shaded region down below the boundary line. And this example, this one is not written in slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and put it in slope intercept form and then graph. Writing this equation in slope intercept form, subtract 5y from both, or 5x from both sides, divide everything by 2, we get y is greater than or equal to, or I'm sorry, y is greater than negative 5 halves x minus 4. So our y-intercepts at negative 4, slope's negative 5 halves, so up 5 to the left 2, and put a point there where we could go down 5 and to the right 2. Since it's just greater than, we draw in a dashed line for our boundary line. Now we need to pick a point and see if it holds true. And again, we can pick the point 0, 0, because it's not on our boundary line. So it's substituting 0, 0 in. Let's see if that is part of the solution. So just like in our warm, or in our first example, we pick the point 0, 0, and we plug that in. So we get 5 times 0 plus 2 times 0 is greater than negative 8. We get 0 greater than negative 8. That is true, which means 0 is part of our solution. So we shade on the side that contains the point 0, 0. Also notice that when I draw the boundary lines in, it extends past the graph. With inequality, it's going to be very important to do that. And here's a third example. Let's put this in slope intercept form and graph, and then pick a point. In this case, I added y to, we added y to both sides. So 4x plus 2 is greater than or equal to y, or y is greater than or equal to 4x plus 2. So our y-intercepts up here at positive 2. Slopes positive 4 over 1 go up 4 over 1, or down 4 over 1. And it's a solid line because it's equal to or greater than, so we drew in a solid line. Now we need to pick a point, and again, the point 0, 0 is not on our line. If it were, we'd have to pick another point around it. So let's see if 0, 0 is part of our solution. So 4 times 0 minus 0 plus 2, is that greater than or equal to 0? We end up with 2 being less than or equal to 0, and that's false, which tells us 0, 0 is not our, part of our solution. So we don't shade here, we have to shade where that point isn't, and we shade on this side of the boundary line since it's not part of our solution. Now you have a couple check it outs to do. Draw your boundary line in first, slope intercept form, draw the line, and then pick a point. Bring any questions you have to class. Now let's go into a story problem. Ada has at most 285 beads to make jewelry. A necklace requires 40 beads and a bracelet requires 15 beads. You want to write a linear inequality to describe the situation, graph it, and then can give the two combinations of necklaces and bracelets So our two, our equation, our inequality actually, we let x be the number of necklaces and y is our number of bracelets. So if we have, it takes 40 beads for a necklace plus 15 beads for a bracelet, she only has 285 beads, so then this number has to be less than or equal to the number of beads that she has. So this is our inequality. Solving it for y, we subtract 40x from both sides and then divide both sides by 15. We get y is less than or equal to negative 8 thirds x plus 19. So on our graph, our y-intercept is up here at 19. And again, it's all going to be in the first quadrant because everything has to be positive. And the slope of negative 8 thirds, we go down 8 over 3, down 8 over 3. And at this point, anything here below the line is going to be a solution. We could pick the point 0, 0, and 0 is less than or equal to 285. So we know that this point is part of the solution, so we shade down there. And this says, give two combinations of necklaces and bracelets that Ada can make. She could make, at this point, she can make 19 bracelets, and so to pick a combination, you're going to pick an ordered pair that is within this. And so in this case, you could do 19 bracelets and zero necklaces, or come out and do about seven necklaces and zero bracelets, or any combination. You can pick any ordered pair in here, and that would be part of the solution. And now it's your turn. So again, start with Writing inequality, Dirk is going to bring two types of olives to the Honor Society induction. 
and it can cost no more than six dollars. Green olives cost two per pound and black olives cost two fifty per pound. So six dollars is going to be your maximum that can be spent. Here's our last example. We want to write an inequality to represent this graph. So we're looking at this. We need to, right now, we can see that the y-intercept is here at the point zero, one. So we have a positive y-intercept, so y is going to equal, and our slope, if we go down one, we got a point down here, which is nice, go down one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four, so we have a slope of three fourths x, but it's not equals. I've made a mistake there. It's a dashed line, so it's not going to equal, and in this case it's above, so y is going to be greater than three-fourths x plus one. For this example, notice we have a solid line here, so it's going to be equal to. Again, let's find, we want to write in the form y equals mx plus b. So this one, make sure you notice what the scale is. We're going by twos. This is two, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. Same thing over here. So our y-intercept is right here. That's about negative five, so we put in negative five for our y-intercept. Then let's find some points that are nice. Here we have, this is going to be at negative two, so we go, I'm sorry, negative four, so we went up, or actually we can even do these, let's go with these two points here. So here we went down two and over four, so our slope was a negative one-half, and so this becomes our equation. With a solid line, shading down below, it's going to be less than or equal to, so we get y is less than or equal to negative one-half x minus five. Now it's your turn, you have a check it out, dash line is going to be less than, or less than or greater than, and this one we have a solid line, so it's going to be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And another one. So to summarize this, we start with graphing inequality as if it were an equation. The difference being our inequality symbol is going to tell us, do we have a solid or dash line? And then we have to pick a point to see where our shading is going to be. So pick a point. If you can pick the point, zero, zero, that's going to be your best. So if zero, zero is not on the line, pick the point, zero, zero. If it makes a true shade to include that point. If it's an it false inequality, shade on the other side of the line. So good luck for any questions you have to class. Thanks.